meeting to order. Test out our mics. Everything working okay? Everything's fine. Okay, great. Um, so, any changes to the agenda? Okay, hearing none, we'll leave it approved by consensus. So item three is comments from the chair. So tonight, we're going to have Sustainable Montpelier Coalition presenting the various proposals that um, submitted entries for the, what was the name of the contest, Barb? Sustainable, Sustainable. Montpelier 21st Design Competition. There we go, Sustainable Montpelier 23rd Design. <laughs> yes, competition. Um, and we're going to be starting that at 6 o'clock. So we have a few minutes before then to address some of the other pieces that we loose ends that we have and make lists of other loose ends to wrap up. So that's how I see us using this time tonight. Um, so moving on, item four is general business. Just comments from the public about something not on the agenda. I assume that you're here for the sustainable Montpelier coalition. But if you have comments on anything else that's not on the agenda for tonight, I invite you to come up and speak. Um, so we don't have any. So that moves at item five, which is the final punch list items for zoning fixes. So Mike, we have about 10 minutes to talk through um, the list of what of items. Take care of. I, okay. I know we won't be able to get through decisions for all of them, but we should be able to prioritize. It, it, we might yeah. be able to. So the pieces that are okay. missing that for anyone who had the, from the email on Friday, um, the updated matrix has uh, a couple of yellow ones that are left, two of which which are actually the same thing. Um, so there was number. 15, which said a map needed to be developed to show the channelized areas of urban centers 1, 2, and 3. I have not made that map yet, so that is one outstanding piece, although I'm going to have a hard time finding unchannelized sections based on how the DRB has been issuing decisions. So oh, we'll I thought see you were going to talk about the snow. No, <laughs> no, it's just a lot of the place everyone was thinking, I mean, it's already been determined to be channelized for all of the north branch. So that kind of takes out, you know, then that just leaves us the Winooski. So I kind of just have to look to see where we might have places that are still not, don't have river walls on the Winooski, but we'll see. Um, I'll develop a map. Um, the next one that isn't done yet is 18, which was develop a definition for a painting studio. Shouldn't take me too long. I just finished, um, which I should mention, I emailed you guys late today the strikeout version, which has everything except for these yellow these yellow ones. So that's what I've been working on. So it's got strikeout version of Oh, okay. Of all this. So we have a matrix that says yeah. these are the changes to be made, yeah. but what we will actually be approving is the strikeout document, not the matrix. Yeah. So yeah. Um, that goes through and shows where all the changes were made. So it was 15, 18, 61. So 61, there actually is something <coughs> that we could do which this uh, 61 we did part of, that was a recommendation to allow new neighborhoods PUDs. <coughs> and the proposal was to allow them in Western Gateway, Eastern Gateway, and Residential 24. Mm -hmm. We made a vote to put them into Western Gateway and Residential 24, and we never made a vote on Eastern Gateway either way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I recall that we just wanted to make sure we were being thoughtful about that process. So. Um, Want to have a quick discussion about that now? I, I was the person who was hesitant about Eastern Gateway, and I mean, I've, I've been over there since then. I, I can't say that I have, I don't know, a strong opinion now, but um, I mean, Mike, what are your thoughts about the, how the PUD would fit in there? I mean, we have somebody who is interested in the Eastern Gateway um, because part of the Country Club Road's in Eastern Gateway. And they, they've considered doing some type, I think 
I don't think they're looking at new neighborhoods, but um, it's certainly giving people options, um, I think is, is fine if they're going to do a good project and they want to take care take advantage of the benefits that doing a PUD would offer. I don't see why it would be a bad thing, but. Um, yeah, and I, I mean, I think that I recall your hesitancy being in part because we really want to encourage density in certain areas. So we don't want to just mistake encouraging density for certain areas for encouraging density everywhere. Um, we want to be thoughtful about it. And so, you know, is this really an area where we, we want to do that? Because it's, it's not exactly walkable. Um, so it would be like Wapila's version of a you know, subdivision or you know, suburban type of development. Um, is it along the rail line? Pretty big area. Uh, I mean, it's a it is big. A pretty area. Yeah. Okay, yeah. It's so. a, I mean, there's a lot of areas out there. I mean, Route 302 is Eastern Gateway. Um, the end part of Route 2. Country Club, Country kind of those areas. Um, What's the? I mean. I think new neighborhood might be a little bit more of a challenge to fit in there, but <laughs> if somebody had an idea to. To do that. And they could they could feasibly by allowing PDs they can feasibly <coughs> get a density increase. I mean, what's the what's the density set at out there? The density is pretty pretty high. So, I mean, it's one unit per five thousand. So I bet they would have a lot of potential development. Is there any residential there now? Not a lot. There is some. Uh, right when you make the corner at the roundabout, there's a, an old hotel, and then as you go around the corner, there's actually one that had had apartments. I don't know if it's all converted to commercial or not. If you go a little bit farther, there's a, um, a single family. There's a home out there. But we also have some vacant lots, and the question comes up, how would those get redeveloped, and what would we be? But I think it would. I think it would be a challenge for somebody to take advantage of it. The question is, if somebody came up with an idea. It's not so the people who are interested are not necessarily interested. I don't in think they're challenge. they're interested in in a new neighborhood. They're interested oh. in. I think they're more interested in cottage cluster type. It's basically, our investment. Yeah, Gallison Hill is pretty industrial. I don't have a, you know, I'm not, this isn't one I'm going to fall on my sword over if people don't think it's going to make a lot of sense, then. No, it doesn't. It doesn't go that far? Do you know where Do you know where it starts? As far as well, when you're leaving town, does it start at the roundabout or that that district? Can you yeah. pull up the zoning map? Oh, okay. It's the purple. Yeah, I think oh, it okay. goes slightly around the corner. So it's not. So it's just this piece down down like, from here. It yeah, it like goes it the right the car dealership. Yeah. Okay. The car dealership would still be up the side here. in. Yeah. But that's a pretty steep oh. slope. That's the right? yeah on the side. And a lot of that would be in the the. Um, Eleven nine, not the gateway. Most of it is, yeah. This part. Yeah. So five two. Is so it's steep. really just mm -hmm. like across from the Agway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, little, Agway across from Agway mm -hmm. is the biggest open space, right? Yeah, there's the mm -hmm. place with the SKI tower. On the the side of the country club, farthest from town, it looks like the most open. Yeah, I think New Neighborhood PODs was contemplating larger parcels. I don't know if we're going to have parcels that would make that work, but like I said, there are a couple of ones that... Well, I'm not hearing it's a lot of interest in allowing this PUD in this district right now. 
but this could be another item to table and to consider as we move through the city plan process and see if this makes sense. But for now, it, do it doesn't sound like we have a strong feeling one way or the other, so I think we should leave things as status quo until we have a more broader discussion about where, where we want to make changes. Does that sound good? I guess this is a concern just that we don't want, maybe we don't want residential development in this Eastern Gateway, because I, I don't, I mean, I would be supportive of including the Eastern Gateway. I guess I don't quite understand the concern, because I'd rather have development here versus like East Montpelier. You know, it's still closer in to me, um, even if it's not totally walkable. And I think the Cross Vermont Trail, I don't know what's ever going on with that, but is going to be connecting, hopefully connecting that. But I don't, you know, if we want to table it, I'm not like <laughs> passionate about it. <laughs> There's already some residential that's allowed there, right? Yeah, residential yeah, is allowed there. It's whether, whether this PUD would be allowed there. PUD in, which would be, you know, mini unit yeah. development. Yeah, the density is one dwelling unit for 5,000, so it has a certain amount of density. John? Yeah, it seems odd if we already allow allow it. I think part of our discussions for the plan is that there's no real strong vision for this part of <coughs> Montpelier, which is on our to-do list to like figure out what this is going to be. Um, and there are questions that like we do have if this is our industrial zoning district, and we do have some of that infrastructure supporting it. Like we should create an environment that's going to be conducive to that um, but without a clear vision of what it should be it's hard to make decisions about mm -hmm. what we should or shouldn't allow there so you know, that's not helpful but no that's helpful no, I, I agree <laughs> so we'll table it yeah we'll table it we'll come back to it the other two were already approved right the Western. Gateway. Yes, the yeah. Western Gateway, and, uh, which includes part of you know National Life residential. and uh, Residential Twenty Four. Um, so the last, last two, maybe last two. Um, eighty three, eighty four. So we're back to I need a definition of the painting studio, which I already have. So actually, we have two of them telling me the same thing. Uh, add definition of change of use. I actually w was going through things and found out I actually already had a definition of change of use, but I did add in a quick statement on on um, to include additions to um, including an addition of a dwelling unit into that definition. I handed that out. It's also in what I had emailed today. I just printed out that one page. Um, I don't know if you guys wanted to have a broader discussion of change of use, but it actually was in the definition section. But you're just modifying it with the... Yeah, because we had a question, um, we had a concern about the fact that our use table says one and two unit and three and four unit. And if we define the use as say three and four units, if somebody goes from three to four units, is that a change of use? Technically, no, it's the use is three and four units, but we actually do want to have them get permits for it. So we wanted to be clear. One option was to break the use table into four lines, one unit, two unit, three unit, and four unit, and then five and up. Um, the other one was to just go and add that to the change of use definition to go through and say, well, adding it's a change of use and therefore it's not a change of use on the use table but it is a change of use because of it's a change in the intensity of the use a four unit building has more intensity than a three unit building and that's our justification for having you get a permit to change that use I think this is a bigger discussion um, maybe not a long discussion but I think more than I, mean, I want to get started on this Sustainable Montpelier Coalition, and we have a couple items to touch on at the next meeting on the punch list anyway. So um, I propose that we 
push this conversation about eight four off till our next meeting. And the last one was one thirty one. And oh, that's one I don't one. have, yeah, which was uh, to do a strikeout version for the enforcement. And so that's going to be more substantial. Okay. So those were all the yellow ones. So okay. Sorry, we have made decisions on actually one, one other one. So we'll, um, I'll get you the painting studio definition. I will get you a map. <coughs> And I will get you the strikeout version of the enforcement. Great. So those are the last things I up. owe for you guys. Well, are we on notes? The 125 was brought up from the last time. The, uh, including three and four residential units. Yes. Um, we decided that that's another kind of broader policy item to discuss as part of the city plan discussion. Okay, so, not so we have a Yeah, we, we made a here. vote to make no change. Yeah. Okay. So leaving it for now, talking mm -hmm. more about it? Yeah, okay. thank you. Yep. Um, there's one more item for this package that we need to wrap up, which is their, our memo that Kirby and Barb have been working on. How's that effort? So, I mean, Feel free to jump in, Barb, but uh, the quick version is uh, we met and I'm going to um, make some changes and, and send Barb a draft and she can tell me whether it's something she wants to sign on to or not. And we discussed if that's if it doesn't work out that way, um, we might end up having to just send to and, and move forward that way. We also had an idea to discuss uh, about the, the other slope change we made about giving the DRB just talking as a commission about giving the DRB maybe a standard to apply for situations where they're having to decide whether they're going to allow construction on a 30% or greater slope, but maybe there's some land available that's flat, and so that we're so that that change of ours is not pushing um, development unnecessarily onto slopes because when you combine that with um, the density change we're doing here. I don't, I, I don't think any of us want to allow greater density and then have that density put on slopes. So, so some checks on that side of it, which I think would assuage some of Barb's concerns. But that's a greater discussion, and the, and the memo discussion is also a greater discussion. So, we don't have any. I, I don't have anything for us to look at right now. I drafted a, another version of the memo based on what we came to before and <clears throat> gave it to Kirby, and yeah, and asked him to make some revisions on it. So. Um, I don't think we're that far away, but you know, Kirby might think do, otherwise. Do you think you'll have a draft of one or two memos, <laughs> however many memos we need to consider um, before the next meeting, so that we could, we, if you could distribute it before the meeting, we can all review it and discuss it in the meeting. Right. I mean, I, I have a draft that I could agree okay. with now, so okay. it's really up to you, Kirby. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I'll send Barb something this week, and then she can get back to me. But okay. we'll have something for the next meeting. Okay. okay. So we'll, I mean, the map for channelized rivers is something that, would we have that, you think? Or is that the longer? map for the channelized? Mm -hmm. uh, I should be able to get to that. I just spent a lot of time yeah. on that strikeout version, so I yeah. didn't get uh, time to kind of. It's okay. I'm just. Want to yeah, get a sense of I will. Where we are. Yeah, I should have something at least something that we can start to discuss and debate as to, you know, really we just need to get something on on the ground and have people start to discuss whether they agree or don't agree with it. And Great. So we have item fifteen, item eighteen slash eighty three, which is the painting studio definition. Um, 84 and 131 and our memo about steep slopes slash density. Yes. Or, I'm sorry, buildable area, buildable area as part of the density calculation. So that's what I have on my list for the next meeting. Good. Okay. Anything else on the punch list, Mike? Or nope, I think that's it. Okay, so the next item on the agenda is to discuss the upcoming adoption process for zoning. We need to vote to set a date for the public hearing. We're kind of getting a sense of the timeline. 
track that we're on right now. But yeah. Why don't you walk us through? Um, so is. that's just going to need the, the standard. You, we have to have at least 30 days. So whatever day we finally approve this and have that strikeout version mm -hmm. complete, because that's what we will use as our, um, as our vote, then it'll be 30 days to have that public hearing, and then we can decide at that point, based on public input, whether we want to forward it to city council or have another public hearing, uh, reconsider, um, you know, for those who went through the process before, this was the, this the part, you have the public hearing, you think, ah, oh, we're ready to go have the public hearing, then you get a bunch of input, and you're like, all right, well, make this tweak or that tweak, and we're back to right. warning another public hearing, but maybe it's something, because these are mostly zoning fixes, that this is one that we can go through the public hearing and move it to city council, um, but it'll be 30 days from whenever we have a draft ready to go. So okay. I had that on the agenda in case this was ready to go and we punched it out today and had it right. done, we We're could warn it. Have it on every agenda. It'll probably be on every agenda going forward until we have it. Because we can't touch it if we don't have it on the agenda, so we'll just put it on there. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yep. All right. So um, I'd like to invite Dan Jones up to give us a presentation on behalf of Sustainable Montpelier Coalition. And I understand Dan has some, some overhead. We, we have a, uh, yes, uh, now we'll have to see whether this decides or, um, okay. hmm. oh, okay, yeah, now it's pretty it bright now, so that's good. Hmm. Um, so just for anyone who's commenting, the only speakers that are on are the speakers that are up here. So if you have something to say, you'll have to come up so we can catch you on the mic or you won't be heard. By you look on TV like you're yelling at us, <laughs> standing over the table. Okay. Hi. Um, I feel like I'm sort of uh, coming to give you an introduction to some ideas we began broaching with you back in September, but there seems to be a large number of new faces here. So, uh, hi, I'm Dan Jones. I'm the executive director of the Sustainable Montpelier Coalition. Um, we uh, arose out of a process that started with a design competition for what could be a sustainable future for Montpelier's um, that completed two years ago last month. Okay, so uh, in that competition, uh, you know, we have a bunch of interesting ideas we thought we'd offer you uh, as part of the, your planning for the new master plan, city plan. Is there a way of getting the lights off over the... There, there are two options. The lights are on or the lights are off. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Oh. I think it's going to be fine. Okay, well. The new projector works much better than the old one. The, the old one, okay. So nobody's figured out how to get the back lights on in the front. No, never mind. I, it, I will. It's not uh, switched that way, but sometime it will be. Fine. Sometime it will work that way. Um, okay, so where we started uh, was in um, back in 2014 when the Energy Committee, uh, which I was chair of at the time, uh, led to the uh, point where it said we're going to be net zero uh, city by 2050, 2030 maybe. Um, and started a bunch of uh, innovations or uh, grew out of innovations that actually led that way, which include the district heat plant, the new city solar farms, where we now have a, a megawatt of uh, generating capacity specifically to the city. We've been educating citizens on energy efficiency. Um, and we even were so good that uh, we were one of the 10 finalist cities for the Georgetown uh, University Energy Prize, which was a, an honorific uh, that was actually you know, quite fun to uh, be part of. We're not quite sure why we were one of the 10 finalists, but we were. Uh, and uh, you know, they took in, into account the fact that we were actually making strides, so the, the, the big new solar plant, et cetera, made a difference. Um, what all of our work did not look at was the uh, issue of what is uh, the biggest carbon sink in uh, our lifestyle, which is the automobile. You know, so a little city of 8,000 has a traffic jam at 4.30 in the afternoon, uh, and 
what we really discovered looking around was there were acres and acres of parking lot. Uh, and so I, I managed to actually get a copy of a drone image of downtown and ended up making this map. So all the red on there is off-street parking for Montpelier. I'm sure some of you have seen this before, but it's really a, a very interesting uh, use of our landscape where th this should be theoretically the most valuable and interesting uh, real estate in town that is uh, dedicated to the parking of the automobile. Um, and we, uh, you know, and it also meant that we had actually land use and energy use is a very curious combination. If you don't talk about land use, you can't really talk about energy use. What we've been doing for 60 years is spreading out upon the hillsides and becoming a, consume, uh, a commuter uh, city rather than a uh, dense downtown. I mean, if you look at sort of 110 years ago, this is kind of what downtown Montpelier looked like with a lot of housing, commercial space, et cetera, a nice railroad station down there uh, in the middle of somewhere about where the new uh, transportation center is supposed to be. And this actually is the most energy efficient form of use of uh, the real estate. Um, so we, you know, we started asking the question, well, how do we trans uh, do a transition to a sustainable city, local future for a small city? And we knew that while we'd like to have young people coming here, uh, you know, this is downtown Burlington, they tend to be uh, less car oriented than uh, we are. They like bicycles, they like getting around in other ways. They don't want to be as dependent on the car, but there's no place for them to live unless you are car dependent in uh, town. Um, so we started looking at this in terms of sustainability, which starts with more people living in town. Downtown housing equals less commuting and shared energy resources like heat and electric. But to do that, in Montpelier, we've got to create some ways of people getting people in and out of town uh, in other ways than uh, their personal car, which will free up the land and reduce our oil demand. And that will allow us to recapture our riverfront and green space, which means more recreation, flood mitigation, quality of life, etc. So to do the first one, we actually have to do the second one first. Uh, and we want to build a people-centered local future, but the question is how. So I was talking with a friend, showing her that red map a couple of years ago, who, down in Boston, who is um, an expert in uh, design and has worldwide connections. And she said, you know, this is the kind of problem that young designers really enjoy. Uh, so what we'd like is, uh, you, what you really ought to do is have a design competition. I said, well, okay, uh, how do you have a design competition? But uh, with some guidance from some people, including Barbara, I have to say, so uh, was helping this as an architect. Um, we managed to raise some money to have a $1,000 prize, uh, our $10,000 prize for the best design, and uh, put it out there. And by God, we got, and we, you know, got 20 actual entries from around the world. And not only did we have them from Vermont, uh, we, we had them from all over the country, we had them from Japan, we had them from Iran even. Uh, we had them from Sweden. Uh, you know, so she was right. This is something that actually young designers were interested in and uh, it created this effect. Now, we had the designs uh, or the proposed designs and we set up uh, across the street at one more time a little pop-up gallery uh, for a week and hung all of these uh, designs and had people come in. And we were amazed, actually. Uh, folks were coming in, they were spending <coughs> serious time looking at the designs, talking about them, thinking about them. Uh, you know, it, it was actually fascinating to watch the kind of level of conversation and the consideration, you know, which is we always have uh, this issue of designs and getting public input, and this was a really strong bit of public input. So people put their comments in and they had um, well, what is that telling me? Okay. Um, and we had a, a voting. Okay, so you vote for the best five. Okay, and I don't know why this is doing it, but it's... <laughs> <laughs> um, so we, we got it down to uh, five finalist choices, and we, that's where we had uh, two years ago the final uh, presentation of those five designs. And you're seeing them here. I'm going to give you a chance to take a look at them a little bit. Uh, in a minute, um, and 
this it's doesn't the thing's got a hiccup. It's things, not, it's okay. not your stuff. It's oh, it's it's the machine. Yeah, I've done right. it for other people. So we had uh, the final presentation over at the pavilion. Uh, here we have the Swedish team making a presentation via mm -hmm. Skype. Uh, you know, which was kind of neat uh, that uh, they had made it to the finalists. Um, and the audience, we filled the pavilion. I mean, there was over 200 people sitting there in rapt attention. It was uh, kind of amazing, actually. Uh, they took notes. They vote. You know, they were they were actually really interested in what was going on. The <laughs> the whole ideas. And again, a second round of voting. We also had voting online, uh, voting, you know, at city hall. So we we tried to engage as many people as possible and had over 750 votes uh, cast. And we were thought that was pretty neat because uh, we were watching how people were responding to this. Um, the winning design was Team Bridges. Um, they, um, so they won in terms of, you know, of the five-way vote, but it, you know, it, there, there were a lot of votes for the other ones, so it was, a, uh, it was not a slam dunk. Um, and then we, uh, you know, a few days later had an award ceremony up at the State House uh, where we got the governor and the mayor to uh, come and receive the design, um, give the big check to Team Bridges. Now the guy on the far right is Jay Ansel. He was the lead designer. He also was the head of Black River Design over here. And I will in suggest to you that you invite him and his team in or to give you a presentation on exactly what they are. I'm going to try and give you an overview of what was going on, but uh, they would probably love to uh, make a presentation to you as well. And hello. Oh, so we still had a challenge, okay? And uh, I, did, did anybody go to the uh, Ed McMahon presentation last uh, March? Ed McMahon, you think? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> that Ed McMahon. <laughs> um, and uh, who is one of the smart growth advocates in the uh, country. He was a, a guy who actually cares about this stuff. And the uh, line we love from him is, planning's important, but implementation is priceless. OK, so we still have these design, this design idea and these concepts, but how do we get them uh, actually made into facts on the ground, unless, which is the big question. So. <coughs> um, a year and a half ago, we formed uh, Net Zero Vermont had done the competition. Net Zero Vermont wanted to um, keep out a statewide focus. And I and, and a couple of people behind me uh, said, well, OK, we've got to do something that's specific to Montpelier. So we created the Sustainable Montpelier Coalition. Uh, this is our opening ceremony uh, and uh, at the reception a little rainstorm came through and left us with this rainbow, so we took it as a, a positive sign that something good was uh, going to come out of this. And I'm going to uh, stop here for, oh, I'm going to leave you with a thought. Okay, all of these designs, okay, the workbooks, all of them are available at netzerovt.org slash finalists. And uh, I encourage you to take a look. Uh, what I'm going to try and do is give you an overview of some of them uh, tonight. But uh, the, it's a wonderful site, so you can, you can have all of the materials uh, online immediately, and it's, it's kind of fascinating. So what I'd like to invite you to do is take a few minutes uh, and take a look at the, the boards of the designs uh, surrounding us so that for a minute before we come back and go into the next step, if you would. If you don't want to, you don't have to, but I, th I thought that, that th this would be interesting for you. No, we want to. What is it about this that? I don't know. I can't remember. Somebody was talking about trying to figure out what was the hiccup. There was a. It just periodically gets a thing going in it. Just gets this little glitch. Just yep. stops. It, po it pops out and pops back in. It always comes back, so we haven't worried about it too much. But I've, I've only been at two meetings. This is the second time I've seen this used. So. 
And I thought last time maybe it was just something with the connection, but now that it's doing it here too, it must be something with that. It's some, something with that and the signaling because. Yeah, or somebody's got a wire that's not fully plugged in. But I'll let Seth know and let him take a work on it. Traveling yeah. issue, but really, it's several people that were closing. It's unreasonable to expect that they won't be something that was a streetcar and all of the designs must be right. some of them were the real but they were the most uh you could show them rather than concentrating everything here we can create more spaces this is down the pioneer bridge you know where the stove parks are that's the that's it i think that's oh, it that's, 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 that's the rotary down here oh, okay. this, this okay. is the most uh, i guess i never realized that it's like i'm driving Okay. Yeah, exactly. That's the rotary. Oh, the stove works. Oh, that's like when you cross over. When you cross over oh, at this Pioneer Street to yeah. the blue tube. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. With the idea that the, 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 this is building right. right. you know, the, the auto wash and all of that. Sort of stuff that could, you know, could this be better place? Maybe cheaper to build higher, you know, higher density. Imagine, there. imagine the undercrowd. This is a gin distillery. So what? This is a gin distillery. Oh, right. This is this area. No, but that wasn't on the board. Right. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. This, this, this is not set. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And I'm trying to remember these. This would be in the floodplain, right? Uh, this is actually a, a little above the floodplain. The floodplain is actually in here is a little more. We'll get. I'll go into that. Okay. Yeah, but, but everybody sort of talked about it one way or another. It's amazing what the grade does in Japan. It's a test service. This one, this one gets into your 30 percent grade problem. What's an autonomous jitney? Ah. I'll get I'll get into that. Self driving no. vehicle. Well, that's, that's, that, that's that's where they were going. They're, they're, you know, I'll, we're actually in the past year and a half something had stuff stuff has happened. I'll, I'll talk about it when we get into it because it's it's, it's neat. I would do it. Well, we can just take a ski lift. Yeah, 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 yeah,
Yeah, yeah. so where is this? Yeah, the the yeah. 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 Yeah, they're already working on this section of the bike path, right? On yeah. the country club Is it actually going to be going there? No, I thought it would be going no, back no, here. No, 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 right? it's, it's going back here. Um, mm -hmm. the, uh, the, and there's some question about whether they want to yeah, move the railroad. You I mean, you know, right. Everything is a moving target. Everything is a moving Yes. Yeah. So we found this map in the job trailer. Yeah. <laughs> they had a copy of this hanging in. Really? Yeah. The, 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 the guy running the job uh, construction site uh, bought, uh, took his daughter to work uh, uh, to do a, a, a college a career exploration and uh, they went to Black River. And uh, he was there, and he said, oh, I loved it. I'm working right here. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is that, is that how far this extends? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who's side of that? Well, this is all of Montpelier. Yeah. Montpelier goes from up here to down here. Well, this is what we were talking about with the Eastern Gateway. Yeah. We don't yeah. have a vision yeah. for it yet. Well, this yeah. is why we're trying to... Right. I appreciate it. Right, this was the area I was thinking about, but I wasn't sure if that still fell in the Eastern Gateway or not. No, it doesn't. It's beyond that. And right it's here. Uh, and yeah, Allison it's Hill. Right yeah. Is this River District or something? Do we have yeah. any idea what's going to cost uh, the to try to get the car? Oh, well, Hopefully it can be a bug car. Uh, the, um, if, if they, the state owns oh, yeah. the right of way from uh, Mafia Junction to Barry. Well, okay. They are, in essence, giving it to Vermont Rail Systems. They're paying for Vermont Rail Systems something like $50,000 a year to use the, the line for the granite trains and supposedly do some maintenance, which doesn't get done. Um, the state, for about $6 million, could rebuild the tracks and put them up to 40 to, uh, 40 mile an hour uh, thing, which, and then David Blutersdorf has these uh, bud cars mm -hmm. that could work on the uh, yeah. those tracks mm -hmm. and uh, be able to get something Yay. in at a much lower, cheaper level than trying to, you know, and then at once once we got it working, we could look toward light rail, et cetera. Right. 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 Pretty expensive endeavor though, to the track though, right? Well, uh, compared to what it takes to keep one two go, going, it's uh, about the same. <laughs> and it's, it, it, it you know, if you do it, it lasts a lot longer. I mean, that's what, what people miss about rail is that it's a, um, yes, you put the money in once and then you have it for a long time rather than. These, these rail, this, this rail bed goes back. Like that. Is that why they did it? I was just wondering about that. Yeah. Yeah. Or it should be. Yeah. Well, it's because yeah. 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 Oh, it's amazing when all these things are in. Well, that's why, it's a, that's why, well, that's why we want to come talk to you about it. Because yeah. it's, it's, a, a, uh, it's a chance to think about it. It turns out that it turns out that it turns out that I mean, yeah, you can stare at this stuff for hours, I know. Yes. Yeah. Groups around the country, Vermont, Scandinavia, decided some cities the first way. 
doing way but you want not there working on sure. the special project <laughs> <laughs> And the idea of putting residential up by National Life, it's an amazing site up there. Mm. I'd love to have a place yeah. up there with all the views. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, the views are. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I thought. You know, it would be worth it to pay for the ride on the gondola just to get the views going up yeah. at the Capitol yeah. and all of that. Mm -hmm. I think so. What does a gondola cost? Huh? What does a gondola cost? Buy some well, of them. Yeah. David just bought one. Yeah. No, no, he has found one. They want to move out of that. We just need like four cars. Two cars. We're good. Yeah. 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 No, actually, I think this they one. just yeah. flipped it. Oh, no, so yeah. 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 This is this one does so not uh, oh, put in the multi measure. This is pretty small. The nice thing about the computer is you can zoom in and out and see the details. I know. Yeah. 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 Yeah
We provided you a little handout here where um, we started with uh, five areas, vision, compact, walkable city transportation, and then we basically tried to um, gang these with uh, you know, your city plan report from the, uh, that you guys have published and uh, the current one and tried to use that as a basis to start looking at stuff. And then finally, we have ideas that are within the various um, plans that uh, here so that you can uh, reference it. Now, you know, but I'll try and go on and give you uh, an idea of, you know, so the vision was maintain the historic path. All right, fine. Uh, follow the smart growth principles, increase housing and jobs, hope that this like, oh, uh, economic yeah, development. Yeah. Um, so if you look, uh, you know, so these are some of the slides from the finalist presentation. Hopefully they'll keep playing. Um, hmm. Okay. So one of the teams and the, the Swedish team in the loop had this idea of the, uh, an integrated approach. I, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's blinking. It's a blinking mode. <laughs> Um, oh, that <laughs> All right. Um, so, this is one of their the steps toward the plan that you see there. Um, the bridges plan you've uh, had a chance to look at and sort of talk about. This is, um, you know, the the whole idea of the larger city working with the idea of a link throughout the city by rail that connects things. So it, uh, it changes the land use concept based on transportation. Um, part of the vision. Um, I like uh, th this one, uh, this uh, one with the neighborhood concepts where it was taking downtown rather than the larger neighborhoods that you were talking about earlier. It takes smaller ones. So for instance, here around the North Branch, okay, we have actually a new neighborhood emerging. Okay, because you've got the French block housing, you've got the new transit center, et cetera, and you've got this, uh, the church talking about uh, housing in there. So that actually now creates a residential neighborhood to think about it. And so what they've done is talk about ideas where there could be one back at the pit, in other words, which could be a co combination of housing and uh, parking. Um, you know, development. Well, you know, I'm, I'm trying here. Uh, and you thought you had Mercury retrograde. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know what I did, but it's obviously it doesn't like me. Uh, should we try turning it off and on again, do you think? Or do you? It's always a good thing to try. Right. Uh, we can try it it's, and see if it's too hard to kick. Uh, the, the, it's, it's. So anyway, uh, going through some of the vision things that come from a number of the uh, things which I'm just going to sort of throw out at you. If you have questions, comments, et cetera, please don't feel free to just stop me. But you know, part of uh, what were common to a number of these was uh, reduced vehicle and increased pedestrian asset for the city to embrace its riverfront rather than ignore it. Public spaces, uh, you know, recreation, quality of life are part of the downtown. Um, open space, public arts. What do you think? Is it doing it or did it? Oh, it's, it's okay, fine. Um, population growth by uh, saying, okay, we'd like to have an idea of maybe increasing the population by 2,000 people, which could be done with 1,000 new units uh, if we're taking um, two people per unit. Um, River access, be nice to be able to get access to the river. There's nowhere actually downtown to get river access. Um, buildings, and a number of them uh, go into this, so it's not just uh, because they're architects in other ways, is uh, <coughs> they, uh, the, they're durable. They're compatible with the net zero goals. Uh, okay. You've got to take into account the floods. The you know the river buildings uh, have to be raised on plinths. Uh, not all of them had this, but the, you know that's one of the things. Uh, several of them had a ways of having the year-round farmers market. Um, four seasons are public spaces. Creating a city identification with sustainability and net zero. Uh, 
this is something a couple of them brought up. Uh, it's a, a in essence becomes a marketing tool for Montpelier, just like we got the Georgetown Energy Prize. This is something young people and others are looking for right now. It is a, an area that we could make an area of strength if we had the zoning and the plan and stuff to move forward on. Um, couple had new services, hotels, conference centers, food hub. So did this die all together, John? Uh, Doesn't seem to want to turn back on. It doesn't like me. I, 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 I have to take it not as a. Uh, oh, there it goes. Yeah, there it's coming go. back. Yeah, I just. It's kind of a um, So those are some of the visionary pieces that um, are possible within uh, this. Um, you know, there, several of them had net zero. Uh, you know, ideas where you. Um, change the architecture largely completely but also create public spaces I don't know it just doesn't like me it's okay I'm gonna <laughs> Here it comes. Okay. it's just gonna flash that's all okay so uh, others of your goals are like uh, compact house a walkable city you know we need housing close to the city center you know reinforce and expand traditional patterns of development we're working on the multimodal transit center, but is it multimodal or is it a bus station? You know, and that, that's a question. So this is some of the ideas that came up in the, uh, yeah, all right, maybe, come on, hello, okay. You know, Jan, I'm thinking that if they, if you use your um, laptop and turn it, they can, you can scooch around the table and look at his laptop yeah, maybe that's. What do you think? Is that better? Well, this is definitely not working. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not working. Um, we can also just see them all around. The yeah, we can see them all around. Yeah. All right. I, you know, I, 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 unfortunately, I, you know, okay, I, you'll have to excuse me a second while I uh, get it into another mode here because it has to go out of. The air is human, but to really screw up, you need a computer. Uh, oh, come on. Now it's doing what? Swap displays. Oh, all right. All right. Do you want to put it maybe yeah. on top of the other one? Mm -hmm. I need to be able to see it, but if it Well, I, 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 I will uh, stand off to the side and uh, use use my little clicker. You're going to have to move around a little bit, but I'm... So you okay. want to put it on top of this one? Well, if you move it forward, then less of us can see it. it. it yeah, it, all right. You're going okay. to want to leave it there. Yeah. 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 All right. I, I, Huh? <laughs> All right. Hopefully, this will now decide to work. But we'll never, we never know until it uh, does. So, this is one of the designs that shows um, the idea of the open space opening up the downtown. All of them basically tried to open up along the river. Okay, um, creating different kinds of walkways so that, uh, you know, if we're talking a walkable city, this one had covered walkways to, uh, you know, imagine getting around downtown. Um, okay, this one, you know, basically uh, mixed use uh, neighborhoods, okay, with, you know, looking at the walkability of various areas. They're, you know, that's out of this one where they're, cre you know, creating and proposing different neighborhoods um, around. That one uh, in the Pioneer District is about yeah. as far as it goes, right? Yeah. This one is interesting, they're called Strainer Streets, okay, which is a mixture of the streets and uh, actually getting the uh, water 
channel rather than uh, using the, the traditional uh, sewer system is trying to keep the water channelized and working in rain, uh, you know, the rain parks, uh, the ways of processing the water so it's part of the uh, walkability of the uh, and the experience of the whole city rather than just doing everything downtown. Um, okay, so a few of the others in there were, um, you know, housing and green ribbons along the river. That you know that you can see that in a number of them. Uh, streetcar line to new neighborhoods in Barry. Uh, you know, gold increase. Um, Population without more vehicles. That was the whole, the whole idea of having mm -hmm. a more walkable. Um, ex, you know, I thought it was interesting this accessible indoor covered pedestrian path linking buildings. You know, it's, you think it's weird, but if you've ever been to like Minneapolis or St. Paul, where they actually have, the, you can walk the entire downtown without ever going outside with these. Uh, things uh, and in midwinter there you know I'm not saying we're going to do that but it's just it's interesting um, what we had and several of them are you know uh, were paths to connect you know and this is where the workbooks help you to see this if you want to uh, connecting on and off street spaces um, closed streets several of them suggested you know either Langdon Street closed or a loop of Langdon and State as a uh, kind of Church Street Marketplace for Montpelier. Um, what and was the suggestion to close altogether, just to pedestrian traffic, or to just pedestrian traffic, except for except what like they do in Church Street, which is you can have trucks mm -hmm. on it till ten in the morning uh, doing deliveries and oh. stuff. You, you know, you do, you can't close it to get. You know, right. They have they have to get the supplies and stuff into the stores. Yeah. Okay. Um, and. Uh, that also said, you know, we need more activities. Uh, this is not part of your job for a younger demographic. Oops. Okay. Transportation, obviously, is one well, of the... Wait, just back, back up for a moment. You say um, the suggestions encourage more activities that would attract a younger demographic yeah. will help achieve some of the broader goals of bringing in more population. The, 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 that's what I'm saying. Yes. What, what, you, what you see in several of them was yeah. the suggestion that by having a, um, a sense that this was a place the young people could uh, be, it's like, it's like there is a great deal of interest in the new bike uh, trails up uh, above North Branch, okay? That's that kind of activity for one group. Um, it's not gonna be my, dem my demographic that's gonna care for it, but um, there are, um, you know, if we had the ability to access this, the river, you know, and have Canoeing, kayaking, etc., on the river, um, you know, it creates a different sense of the downtown. It's, it's recapturing the river. So a lot of them basically are working on the idea of refacing, recapturing the river, so that it becomes part of our lifestyle downtown, as opposed to um, what we've sort of turned our back on. We've got parking lots that go right up to the edge. It's not a. Um, well, I do think that we can try to keep that in mind as we work on. Play, I think that makes sense. Well, that's why we're trying to talk yeah. to you. We, we think you have a lot of latitude in that if you wanted yeah. to um, look at it. Okay, so so we want convenient, smart transit uh, systems. Um, now, this is one of our sustainable Montpelier's um, big goals, and I'm going to talk about what's <laughs> going on for a second because we. Um, we have done two things uh, in the past six months that have proved to be kind of interesting. We, we realize in building coalition, you bring people together. It's not like we're um, doing this by ourselves. Uh, we're, we're too small, et cetera, but we can convene people to talk about. So we did a discussion roundtable on transportation um, up at National Life back in September. Um, had the major employers in town, city councilors. Um, we had uh, the downtown, uh, the, Montpelier Alive, we had um, the planning, um, the, the economic development people, um, other uh, representatives. And out of that, one of the presentations we'd organized was from a company that does something called microtransit, on-demand microtransit. And you're going to hear more about this uh, soon. On-demand microtransit is basically a marriage of uh, small buses and an Uber type of software 
where uh, you can dispatch them in a way that has them uh, responding to demand. And so it's 9 o'clock in the morning or 8.30 in the morning, and you have people, a bunch of people who like to get downtown to work, but you have others who want to get to National Life, others might want to get up to the hospital. And the computer knows <laughs> that some people want to go here, other people want to go there because it, you put it in in the request, and you can call it in, you can put it on the, the smartphone. And the uh, and different buses will pick you up even if you're next door with each other. It's not like one bus going around doing it because one will be directed to take, go up to the hospital and another one will go to National Life, et cetera. So it's the most efficient way of collecting people and keeping them moving. And this is something that has been developing over the past couple of years. Um, so we had a presentation on this, and actually uh, the people at VTrans who were there at the uh, thing said, well, this is very interesting. So they actually organized a um, working group to explore it uh, and um, named us, uh, the St. Paul Montpelier Coalition, as their community partner in this. And uh, so we have uh, a couple of city councilors, um, Barbara, um, we have... Uh, People from the Center for Independent Living, we have seniors, et cetera, all meeting at VTrans to uh, look at whether this is possible, okay, as a way. Because if you can imagine, if we could get 500 uh, people, there are 500 people, state employees, who live in Montpelier and drive down to work. There are actually 1,300 people who live in Montpelier and commute to downtown to work. So. A good part of your parking is actually taken up with people who live here. Yeah, of course, there are the people from Barrie. There's the people from uh, come, you know, from other places. But this, just talking about what happened, we're we're only interested in what happens here. Um, so that's why we we're interested in this uh, as a an approach because what it would allow is us to rethink the land use because we could work with the state and say, well, if we can get 150 people using this, could we get this? piece of property to uh, develop along the river, you know, because part of our goal is also to reclaim the riverfront. And you can't do that as long as you got the parking lots going right up to the riverfront. It's a, it's a whole new way of <laughs> trying to do so that. So the fact is, the state is, uh, we're working with the state. The state is uh, committed to having a white paper out within the uh, Transit Administration, Transportation Administration, by the end of March, um, with the hope of um, maybe if some Federal Transit Administration money is available, having a pilot project uh, start by uh, the end of summer, if not in 2020, where uh, this would replace, in essence, the circulator, the capital shuttle, uh, the hospital shuttle, and would actually provide services on an on-demand basis rather than a fixed route, fixed schedule. So that's why it's called microtransit, because it's like seven or eight passenger vans, although we'd have a couple that will be larger and wheelchair accessible that can be uh, used for people with uh, special needs. And uh, re start reinventing what might be uh, local transit. Couple that with the idea of a train, you know, which number of, uh, almost all of them had some version of light rail, because they saw the rail going through town. This one was the most fully developed, but it was not the, uh, you know, it was not the only one w which was to connect different parts of the city with the light rail system. So we're, uh, you know, so that was a common one, and making ra a room for that kind of thinking in your future planning would be very uh, useful. So um, here are some of the, uh, I, you know, so here's where most of the parking is now, uh, the state employees. Uh, take up a good portion of it. Um, one of the uh, ideas was to look at this. These are walking paths to be developed, uh, walking and bike paths, you know, as a whole plan. This is part of an idea of basically being able to recapture the whole um, south of State Street period, uh, area as a pedestrian centric development as opposed to, uh, you know, auto centric. Um, this one's very interesting in terms of bike paths and other paths to connect different parts of the, you know, could there be a path that goes from, in essence, the nature center into town? Could there be a path, you know, you've got the one bike path sort of started, but, you know, could there be others and could that become a major feature? Uh, had a uh, young man talk to recently who uh, 
was so interested by these plans coming up that he was going back to Holland where he had been uh, working because uh, he's a bike fanatic and wanted to be a part of the place. And he said, well, you know, actually, maybe this could happen here. So he's going to stay around to try and help make things happen. I thought, oh, well, that's interesting. Um, the um, Okay, this one again is connecting. Uh, th this is the larger, or the, the one where the uh, we use the railroad to connect the various nodes developed in town. Okay, see again, tr this is their version of the transit center. Uh, you can see it in here. Uh, they 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 didn't look at the design that was, you know. But but as you can see, the uh, the, the tracks are mm -hmm. um, part of that. So. This is uh, an area where you see that, that was a common theme. It was developed differently by each one, but it's, it's something to start thinking about. Uh, so others have said, well, you know, we can have a streetcar, uh, you know, add rail service to the multimodal center. Okay, that will bring it more multimodal. Um, right now it's only a bus station. Um, you know, others want elect uh, electric tram on removed parking lanes, okay, uh, on state and main uh, as a possibility. Or a people mover light rail. Um, the idea of shared car share, vehicles, bike share, uh, et cetera, was brought up. Some of whether that's in your province or not is, uh, is not an issue, but it is something that could be developed if, uh, if if it was safer, okay. A lot of bikers, bicyclists I've talked to do not feel exactly safe on the streets right now. Um, the bike chair is the the bike taxi thing where you. No, it's like you uh, you go, you go to uh, Boston or you go to Montreal yeah. and uh, you can <laughs> rent a bike to right, yeah. you, you know. Connor Casey thinks you can do it all with a, a scooter. I'm not sure that that's the. Uh, appropriate, but th that's the yeah. idea. Th that's a bike share. Yeah. Car share would be the same. If you had this micro transit system we're talking about, you could imagine a um, a system where we had brought back car share only more of them. One of the problems with the car share was you had to have a car to get downtown to get to the car share. If we get here elsewhere, and people were giving it up and say, "Oh well, I have to go full visit my grandchildren in Randolph." You could go get the car share for the day and go to Randolph, or you could go to uh, Lebanon or uh, Burlington or whatever and bring it back and return town. So rather, and there's a huge economics for this because uh, I don't know if you know that AAA says in Vermont it costs nine thousand dollars a year on average to keep a car on the road. You know, so if we could price the uh, micro transit uh, in general for somewhere a third of that where you could have the same convenience without the uh, without owning a car uh, that might be a real um, attraction if you will um, so we've we've actually put out the first RFI on the micro transit and there has been uh, got four responses two of which look real so the state is actually excited about this possibility okay now rivers and green space We've got a problem insofar as, uh, again, we've turned our back on the river, okay. We've sort of lost that as a uh, feature, you know. Every city in the country that really wants to do smart development embraces its river, so it's time to start thinking about that, and I think this is in your ballpark to some degree. Um, this gives us uh, natural features, vistas, air and water protection, wildlife, you know, plus a lot of public access to recreational opportunities, whether it's walking along the water, boating, uh, you know, resting. Um, you know, one friend, uh, Elizabeth, back here had done a, uh, found a picture, uh, you know, a, a sad picture before the, the construction started over here. Somebody, you know, with a business suit coming downtown with their, their lunch and kind of sitting, you know, on this <laughs> rock. It kind of overlooked the river, you know, and was sort of sad because there was no nice way to actually be close to the river. So mm -hmm. that, is, that is something that could be. Uh, so, you know, this is what the river, uh, the confluence of the North Branch and the uh, Winooski look like now. It's not inviting. Um, you know, but one had, uh, you know, basically created a whole park, you know, uh, 
by the river where uh, the river could actually flood in and become a skating rink and a wading pool uh, using Winooski water. Um, others, as you can see, always the green space along here is recaptured in almost all of these. That one there. Um, again, creating a whole circulation of, of the river where you can experience the river in uh, multiple means. Um, One thing I'm noticing is none of them um, acknowledge the gas stations <laughs> on the other side of the river. So I just wanted to keep I, I, everyone's, I acknowledge, keep that in our mind. They're basically uh, saying you could do better. Right, well, I agreed, agreed. But I just want to point that out. Potentially yeah. moving those services to the satellite lots mm -hmm. where it would be more appropriate anyway mm -hmm. so that those would actually get potentially relocated as well. And further away from the water. Yeah. yeah. Further, I mean, water you, really, yeah. The, the job is in planning is do you want to, does things just stay the way they are or do you uh, yeah. want to imagine other ways of doing it and should they be there? But that's. And I think one of the discussions we had about zoning when I first started and we were rewriting, well, we were We've been rewriting the zoning for years, but um, when when we first started, I remember there was a discussion about how we what we wanted to do for allowing uses in the area that we called "quote unquote" gas station <coughs> alley. <laughs> and um, I had just joined, and I wasn't really sure how to express my d dissatisfaction that the gas stations were just right on the river. I think that's something we can re-examine. Um, not to say we should, you know, close down those gas stations, but we could make it so. Uh, a migration plan. Yeah, exactly. So um, I just want to mention that because this, I mean, these these are idealistic plans, obviously. Um, but they're they're idealistic yeah. plans. We're trying to give. That's why I said this is yeah. sort of a an upper level view to give you some ideas of that you might think about in a going forward plan that, yeah. that would be a little more imaginative, exciting, et cetera. And so that's yeah. that's all we're doing. We're talking about reclaiming the river. Reclaiming, Re we're reclaiming the river. So we're talking about reclaiming the river. Yeah. You know, here's another one with what decided to take out Shaw's um, and put a con conference center in. Well, well, maybe. But notice again, here's here's a that space where the uh, old bl uh, blind uh, and the uh, Moai property, that's reclaimed as a park in there now. You know, so it becomes, in essence, a gateway park um, there uh, as you're coming in Main Street, et cetera. So there's another possibility to think about. Um, that one, this is Confluence Park, and there, uh, you know, so this this one has, you know, a, a merry-go-round, a uh, the farmer's market under a permanent uh, roof, okay, and and uh, you can see people pulling their kayaks into the the river down here. Um, you see that on a postcard? Huh? It's what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It could be on a postcard. It does look very enjoyable. I think, it was, enjoyable. Yeah. I think you it was in ads against the parking garage. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're I'm being sarcastic. Oh, okay. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I I have promised my board that I'm not taking a position, so. <laughs> Well, but, I mean, but on that note, just like, since I brought that up, uh, a lot of these seem to actually be compatible with what's being put in there because a lot of the, the green ribbons, like you mentioned the word ribbon, which I think is a good, good term for this, are on the other side of the tracks. So that's still a possibility. Mm -hmm. so. Might have to oh. hit your board. Uh, come on, wake there. up. <laughs> yeah, that's true, Kirby. I think, you know, that still that area on the other side of the tracks is pretty well developed in most of them. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily for a parking garage, but it's shown as developed. Right, and yeah. but in the other ones there was a garage somewhere. Right. Oh yeah, no, no, that, that, yeah. there were, you know, and I will get into that in a second, yeah. okay, that's another part of this. Sorry, we're getting ahead of you. Huh? <laughs> what? We're so excited. We're getting ahead of you. <laughs> no, no, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to uh, give you whatever you want. I'm, uh, you know, so this, the, the, I'm just showing this. This is the one that has the entire sort of south uh, side of uh, State Street as a separate uh, driverless mm. neighborhood. Okay. Um,
you know, public green spaces. They're all, you know, so all of them, in essence, address the public green space. That this is, they, you know, you can you can walk around Montpelier and say, that's, where is it? You know, is the state house lawn the only green space in town? So taking the parking lots yeah. and turning them into green space, into public green space in general. Yeah. So. <clears throat> Um, the other thing about riverfront access, and this one I wish I could blow up for you because it's very interesting. Um, I will make this, by the way, available to you if you want to uh, yeah, that'd be great. Ha have it for the record. This is a... Uh, well, we'll have, I mean, we're creating a website where we're going to put in, use it as a repository for all the ideas that we're kicking around, so this would be great. It's all on there. Hmm? Okay. It's all been on there for like six months. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's already it's, there. One it's already day we'll there. start planning. One, one day you'll start putting stuff on it, but it's there. Uh, no, the, the site's there. This stuff has been up there for a long time now. Oh, the, the, the entry. I'm just, I'm just giving it's everyone a hard there. time because I've been asking. To, I've been trying to like start the city plan for six months, but we just talked about zoning. So. Good. We well, do you want to? I, 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 then John, I'll let you take over the uh, the thing. We're ju we're just trying to get you. Uh, John wasn't persuasive enough. We needed to bring in someone from the. He's outside. not shaming you. Shaming us. Right no, you, just mm -hmm. to be clear. Dan, you, you you just pushed us over the edge. Now That's we can right. start here. Exactly. <laughs> so we're we're here now. What this is an interesting um, representation of is the flood way. Okay. So you have to then consider in whatever you're doing, and mo uh, several of them did actually address this, which was, you know, anything that you do within the floodway needs to take a, uh, <coughs> consideration of, uh, you know, are they on plinths? Do they have to be uh, raised up so that uh, you're not sitting there uh, with the assumption of being flooded? It's like, uh, you know, any new development has to, you know, in Montpelier says, well, actually, in the hundred, that's the hundred year flood. Okay, so we actually have to then pay attention. You know, this is this is the the red line is what downtown with the the hundred year flood. Okay. Okay, so that's um, that's got to be part of the consideration. You there are ways of doing it, but it requires raising things up, uh, having common space. You can have commercial space, common space, storage space in the floodway, but you cannot have living space. Okay, so we start. We were wanting to get to the point where housing was, of course, going to be a part of this uh, equation. Because if you want new people, if you want to get the people on the hillsides, etc., they have to be somewhere to live. And with a half a percent uh, vacancy rate in town, that's a uh, a challenge. You know, you're, I'm not telling you guys anything you don't know. Uh, but the question is, you know, how do we have safe, affordable, diverse housing? You know, you've got ideas of duplexing old homes, allowing infill and cluster. That's what, you know, what this was looking at was how do we do it within, in essence, these concentrated areas. So notice here uh, the idea was, okay, we could have housing here on the other half of where the tax department is, you know, or back here on Court Street. Okay. they. Um, they were looking at a variety of places in town, you know, where housing could be considered. While you, while you brought those two ideas up, I have a, I have a question, and it's maybe for Mike. So partnering, <coughs> both, of, both of the things that were just mentioned there seem like really great ideas. Doing something next to 133 State and also doing something with the pit and with Court Street, but they would require partnering with the city is it appropriate for the planning commission to reach out and start talking to the, st or I mean, work with the state, start talking to the state about partnership things, or is that more of like the city manager's role? Usually the partnership stuff comes through the city manager. I yeah. think what we would be looking for is to propose <coughs> um, some development themes to start working towards. Um, you know, we're gonna have to come up with a land use plan um, or come up, come up with plan policies and, and goals of what we're looking for. So and we, then we, we can... We could plan to work with the state, but we probably shouldn't in the meantime talk yeah, to the We state. probably wouldn't be doing the outreach, but we do want to have the discussion of all of the components so when 
you know, council makes a recommendation, they've thought about the, you know, you know, is this, is, would this be a good idea for us to do that means we as the Planning Commission may study whether from a transportation standpoint, you know, um, there's a lot of discussion about putting a big parking garage and putting a bunch of development in the pit. All the transportation studies will tell you, you can't put a parking garage in the pit. It, it just messes up every intersection that's down there. Um, all the studies have said, if you're going to do a parking garage, you have to do it in the Jacobs lot or you have to do it in the Capitol Plaza lot because it has easy access back to the highway um, to, for efficient, efficient moving. So f before we have a the manager or a council look at building a parking garage, say, we would probably go through and just go and determine whether that's a good idea and then they would go out and actually do there, it. There, there are other places on state or at the labor lot, et cetera, where uh, it would not be the same. Yeah, where an idea may not have been considered yet, but I think we wouldn't necessarily reach out to the state. I think we would go and look and determine whether it's a good idea. How does it fit into the land use plan? How does it fit into all of the other pieces? Right. And then we would bring that to council, and council says that's a great idea. Might go and study it. Um, it's kind of the same way with the, the railroad idea. Um, Right. You know, do we or do we not work on the railroad? I think as a planning commission, we come up with a policy that goes and says, we think this is a good idea, needs more study. We recommend to city council that we study it. And then, you know, then I can, as staff, get to work studying it. And if we find it's a viable idea, then we start working with, okay, what are the barriers? Who do we have to? These seem like the foundation pieces for our entire city plan because so much hinges on parking and transportation solutions and if we choose to put the wrong things in the city plan things that are looked at later and are thought of as you know not worthwhile or not not plausible then we've built up our city plan on that idea um so i, I don't know that's what's kind of on my mind with this stuff that's why you're to you <laughs> The, um, so this this one is just an idea of, uh, from the Swedes of kind of housing where it's built up so that, again, the bottom floor is up on uh, concrete plinths. But the top part is actually, rather than concrete, et cetera, and brick is a uh, wood uh, construction. It turns out uh, there's a, been a lot of increases in, especially Scandinavia and someplace in America, where wood is now actually for large-scale structures such as this an acceptable medium because there's been new ways of bonding wood, uh, of constructing with it that actually provides the, t uh, the strength necessary to make this kind of stuff happen. Mm -hmm. So, and that of course would be very good for Vermont because uh, then you could be using local, you know, it's not like you're, you're having to uh, um, in, import mahogany to make it happen. It can be done with, <laughs> um, you know, this is where, uh, Oh, yeah. So this was the idea that they're, oh, you know, that they had in here that Pioneer Street could also be a new area for housing development that hadn't been looked at before. That uh, encouraging it in there becomes a way of uh, getting it, um, getting some new housing capacity relatively proximate to downtown. Um, another version of, in essence, in Court Street. This is uh, with minimal parking underneath and uh, more uh, appropriate housing appropriate for the uh, the architecture of the area on where the pit is um, you know there is parking in the pit so it's not like there it's not a parking area the question is what, what level of parking do you want there um, and I think that's where Kirby was you know your point is well taken which is we we might not be able to do anything with it um, if the state or the federal I believe some of it's federally. Well, it's a state. It's a, it's a, it's mainly the state. Uh, the the, the, the you're not going to get the post office, but you know that's uh, thing. But the, the the most of it is actually owned by Vermont Mutual. Okay. So it would actually they would be now if they could be convinced something in the work. Uh, they're also always looking for investment opportunities. So. Is there anything downtown that's not specifically owned by the city is going to have that problem? Yeah, that's somebody true. Else that anything yeah. inside. Right. For downtown. Yeah, Unless even even the two it. houses, even the two garage projects that we talked about, one was Capital Plaza, one was Jacobs. 
One is owned by the Bashara family, one is owned by the Jacobs yeah. family. No, either either case, point. we're always looking at The state at it. happens to be the biggest. This, 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 the, this state's the elephant in the room, but. There are a lot of things we can look at, though, in terms of policy levers. Like, like right now, um, we think of like land value taxation. So right now, like Liberty Mutual, they, they took down buildings on Court Street and their taxes were lowered, right? So the, the less we invest in private citizens invest in our downtown, the lower their property tax bill, even though our infrastructure is exactly the same. So like well, that's, start that, creating some economic incentives yeah. for actually building things, and then things might get built. Right, so we decide what we want and what's feasible, and then the we website figure it out. Too. What? Like that? No, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't imposed the land value taxation <laughs> to our like fake <laughs> municipal plan. <laughs> again, this is the one where the neighborhood idea we're showing where you could have, you know, again, it's basically trying to figure out a deal with the state to get, you know, access. There's really only uh, about 700 parking spots from Bailey Avenue down to uh, Number Two Taylor. So uh, it's, you know, there are ways of thinking about trying to trade those off if we can get other people into town in other ways. They're all state employee parking lots, of course. Um, again, this is another version of the Court Street um, plan. I'm, you know, I'm not pushing any one of these. I'm just saying this is the kind of thinking that was going into all of this. So it was. You know, giving them a defined area of pretty much the downtown uh, created a way for a lot of ideas to come forth out of this, which uh, was great. Um, this one was sort of fun because, again, it took that idea of a park on the East uh, Gateway Park here, but also creating an art space in here rather than a parking lot. Now, that's Jacob's property, so there'd have to be some way of doing it. But, you know, again, riverfront. Okay, ac activating the riverfront, uh, you know. If anybody's actually gone behind the propane tanks and stuff, it's actually kind of a pretty <laughs> part of the North Branch down in there if, if it was accessible. Um, you know, so that, that, that's just another way of uh, looking at this. So now we get to parking. All right, uh, we, we know it's everybody's favorite uh, thing. So, you know, how do we do it? Does it include satellite parking, garages, surface parking? Okay, but, you know, what's the whole way? We, you know, we know there could be satellite parking. The, the city knows it, but, it, you know, is it doing anything about it? Uh, you know, for instance, there's a whole lot up where the old Brown Derby was that was supposed to be considered, but it's, you know, nothing's happening with it. Uh, you know, there are other places that, you know, so this is where... We've had uh, ideas, uh, you know, including the uh, vaunted garage down there, plus some Court Street, plus over here behind uh, 133 State. You know, you, uh, what they're proposing is you could take 403 spots in these area and turn it into 590 spots in those areas. So it's a, uh, you know, so it is a centralization recapturing land, so that's one approach that is con uh, was considered. Um, this is an interesting one. This is a idea of a plinth where you literally, rather than digging down into uh, the riverbank, you build up from it and then you create green space on top of it and you have parking. If it floods, it floods in there and you're still above the floodway, okay, as one uh, approach. Whether you like particularly the buildings on top of it, it, uh, you know, the, it, it is another way of considering uh, how we could have, you know, combination of parking and development, uh, you know, within that area, you know, because the river is always a consideration, the flooding is always a consideration, and global warming tells us it will be, it will come back to haunt us at some point. So would that actually perhaps help us in the terms of soil mitigation if that area um, in, um, sure. uh, is contaminated? We could just leave it there. You could just leave it and put, uh, uh, and you basically it seal it and come, go, come above it. Yeah. Um, it's adding additional fill in the floodplain still. Hmm? It's adding fill in the floodplain still, which is not typically ideal. 
Yeah. He probably got given our incest rivers. I mean, you're really imagining putting the whole thing as as a. Yes, it, 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 there's the Army Corps of Engineers and all the rest of them that have to go through, but it's, I believe the engineering is possible. Stephanie works in hazard mitigation planning, so mm -hmm. she has to say it. She doesn't mean I know everything, but yeah, I feel the need to chime in with it. Yeah. No, no, no. I mean, I, it's incised and it's all in a flood, it's all a floodplain now anyway, but. Yeah. Uh, Going up. Th th this one is uh, 133 State Street, uh, where instead of a new building that uh, Gosson's uh, proposed, this one has parking above uh, and then housing above in there, which, uh, and they, they say this can be designed in such a way that not only that, that the parking below, if it were done flat floored, could become housing if we had more aggressive strategy for keeping cars out of uh, downtown, depending on what happens with the, you know. I'm, I, I'm going to take a position that nobody else likes, which is uh, global warming stuff is telling us we're going to have to do something <laughs> about the car sooner rather than later. Nobody wants to admit it because, you know, the assumption is we're going to keep going on the way it is. Um, both the economy and the uh, environment say we're going to have to attend to it sooner rather than later. So the more that we can do the thinking that will do this, from my point of view, but that I'm not one of the designers. Uh, it's, it's just I stick it out there because I think it is one, something that we're going to have to worry about. Um, again, parking down at the, uh, I know you keep saying there's somebody looking at the Grossman's lot, but that's been years and uh, nothing's happened there. <laughs> is there, is, is something happening there? <laughs> There's people that the property has uh, the property has sold. I can say that because it's got a new sign out. Oh, okay. I didn't. Uh, uh, yes. So what are they doing with? Uh, well, it's uh, build to suit. Is build so to suit. The <laughs> Talk about a, cons uh, a um, <clears throat> shall we say toxic site. <laughs> That remediation, boy, would I, I'd hate to face that one. Well, they've done they've done the testing. They know what's there. They've got all the plans. What was so, there before? Uh, it was a, it was the location of the coal coal, coal gasification, gasification plant. plant. Oh, okay. So it's got, it does have coal tar. I'm not going to put a yeah. children's school there or anything. Yeah, you're probably not going to be seeing any daycare yeah. facilities. Yeah, yeah. Construction company after that, right? Uh, yeah, Grossman's. That's why they call it the Grossman's lot. Yeah. Right. It was it was the Grossman's lumber company back. Uh, that may be before some of yours time, but there, there it was sort of a, a, a New England franchise of lumber yards. Um, this concept's interesting because they're actually looking at taking the parking and putting it under solar canopies, mm -hmm. as well which, as which makes a solar park out of it, as well as the, the um, gas station service. You, you see four places like that in front of the co-op, but this is, would be a whole parking lot. And then they, they had the idea of uh, moving Joe, Bob Sunoco down here with a convenience store that would, uh, mm -hmm. so if you parked there, that would be where you'd wait for the train and where you would get a coffee. From there, it looks like the bike path would just take you in too. So. The bike path would take you in as well. But, but see, they've got the train coming here. The bike path, I think they're assuming you come over here with, but that's. Yeah. Uh, this is imagined as a city development, not yeah. a private one. It's imagined as a city development, yeah. but it could be a private one. I mean, maybe a private parking lot, basically, you know, private satellite parking. Um, this is recognizing, you know, the, the, suggesting there could be a garage over at the labor lot, which could triple or quadruple the. Uh, Available parking there, and you know, oh. some, oh, okay. yeah, screen, yeah. some some kind of a uh, link into you know they talk about it as a third of a mile to uh, here, but uh, some there could be shuttling or whatever to uh, this. But again, that could take you know 800 cars. Mm -hmm. All right, final area which we started with, which was uh, the energy component of this. You know, the whole idea of this was to get net zero energy development plans uh, forward. Okay, so, you know, how do we get renewable, reusable energy, reduce the greenhouse gases, uh, reduce the energy demand, um, and meet or exceed the state energy plan? You know, 
2050. It's like uh, our grandchildren are supposed to deal with it, but the uh, you know the rea the reality is uh, it's it's something that has to be talked about now. Um, so different of them had different ways of uh, you know, and these were more summaries of uh, what could be done. You know, putting in. Uh, wind and uh, solar putting in a reduction, you know, so it was a combination of, you know, if you do the right new building, you know, and you had a, you know, uh, where, where is the next one? Uh, here, connected to the district, it, new buildings connected to the district heat plant. You know, surprised that the city wasn't more aggressive on that one, that, uh, you know, you could have net zero building in essence uh, with the, um, you know, the new level of what can be done as far as insulation, uh, building uh, design, making the best use of the solar gain, making uh, putting the uh, solar panels on top, uh, you, you can make net zero buildings without uh, you know a real lift anymore. I mean, we, we know how to do it. The question is the choice. You know, having this, the district heat plant is of course an added one because you, you need less electricity if you've got the biomass uh, service provided. Um, okay, so this is an interesting one. These are uh, existing buildings that say all have to be retrofitted. Okay, it's one thing to build new. The other one is all of that is there, okay. All of it is very wasteful in terms of the design and energy. So there's a whole uh, job that the city has to do. That's where it's interesting that uh, you know the mayor and council are uh, considering this charter change thing, which will allow you know sort of an energy rating from mm -hmm. the uh, landlords because you know the landlords have been sticking the tenants oftentimes with the energy charges uh, for the heating, et cetera, rather than uh, saying should we be taking more of a proactive role which will help the landlords to actually do the energy work, the, uh, the efficiency work necessary. I can tell you having done the efficiency work in my house, boy does it make a difference in terms of uh, the livability of the place and uh, the cost of heating it. So I'm a big advocate on that one. So this is you add those in with the new buildings all of whom are now have on this plan have solar uh, fields on the top of them. and the district heat. So again, the district heat was a uh, feature of a number of these for the downtown. Uh, it does a way, uh, a way of actually creating, you know, lots of new units, you know, that could be supported and heated. Um, but the city has to take that seriously. They sort of, like, they made the cost of hooking up, like you have to pay for it now, which is why the French block chose not to do it because it was just too costly. Um, so, summary. I'm going to have to turn this and read it myself because <laughs> I didn't print it. Uh, I thought it was going to be up there. This was going to be. So, more housing and transit equals less traffic. So we've got to work on alternative transportation systems. You know, walk or use transit from home. That's one of the reasons why we're looking at the microtransit because it, it makes it easier. You know, when you talk to the seniors, et cetera, everybody says, well, we'd like to take the bus, but it never comes. I don't know when it's coming. When's, you know, it's like, so the idea is you have to make something that is convenient and uh, easy as your own car, okay? And that's what we're, we're looking to do. Uh, Riverfront parks and green spaces and housing development are necessary for, uh, you know, our future development. Uh, you, you already know about diverse housing throughout the city, but what the red map and these things show is there's a huge opportunity downtown if we can figure out how to capture it. Um, we need alternative parking options, okay, and we renew renewable energy to reduce our uh, greenhouse gases. So. Oh, come on. All right. I apologize. I have to run at 7.30, huh? but thank you very much, Dan. All right, I'm done. All right, I have one, one, a couple of pieces, and then I'm... I'm, 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 I'm oh, I'm, it's, it's empty. Uh, so what these are is proposing di design concepts that can be integrated in your new city plan. Okay, well, that's why we're here tonight. Um, we're including the city's committees, and we've made presentations or a part of all of them in uh, various ways for uh, building the coalitions. Um, 
We've already done, like I said, both the transportation um, roundtable and a roundtable on the Lower North Branch, which led to some different thinking about what could be done along the riverfront there. So we look to work with you on anything we can uh, provide in the future. Um, we hope to be a resource to the city committees uh, as they work with you to contribute to the city plan. So we're not trying to be, you know, coming in from outside, but to be a way of uh, influencing uh, all of the different people. Um, as you can see, the design competition offered multiple concepts for each of the city committees on what could be done, uh, you know, and we're, we just wanted to give you the overview on what came out of it so that you could be prepared for the future. And well, thank you very much for your time. That was, uh, mm -hmm. and we, we almost got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Exactly any, any questions or anything else anybody who wants to finish with? A lot of questions, a lot of questions, but I think we're going to have to kind of work through some of these ideas. It sounds like, I mean, I, I felt myself thinking about the challenges of a variety of the ideas, and we'll have to find that balance of being able to look broadly at our wish list <coughs> and not getting bogged down by what the hurdles might be, but also thinking about what the hurdles might be is because we don't want it to be a non-starter and then we have problems. So just finding that balance. See, and th th this is why, you know, why, just why I was telling you about the micro transit and the, tra the train is that we tried to say it's not a parking problem, it's a transportation problem. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so, so sometimes it is just switching how you think about things rather than saying, Oh, we got this parking problem. What do we do? Oh, we need more garage. We need this or that. Rather than saying, yeah. well, maybe we have to change how people move around. Maybe we can help do that and make it fun and uh, convenient, et cetera. And that changes the discussion and moves things around. So that's what I was hoping you might consider for some of these other pieces. Yeah. Sorry, I have to leave too. Anyone else have questions or thoughts? Okay, yeah. thank you. We're going to look at all of this, and we'll probably ask you to come back again. I, we're at your disposal. Thanks so much. Thank you. Uh, uh, my pleasure. Uh, so, Mike, is it okay if we kick the meeting minute consideration to the next meeting? Sure. Okay, so, yeah. that puts us to the last item of the agenda, which is to I have a motion to adjourn. Yeah. I move. A second. Okay, Stephanie seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.